In this week's You Can Project, we're going to build a power bank that would power AC appliances on the go. Whether it's a full-sized gaming laptop, an LCD TV, a lamp, or an electric fan, this thing could power it on the go. Oh, and by the way, it could also be charged and powered with green and renewable energy coming from a generic DC solar panel. This project was brought to you by Banga.com. And of course, different is better. This is a 12 volt inverter, and it's a really common car accessory that can turn your battery into a wall outlet. As seen on my soon to be released project, the Slim Panel. This thing can power lights, laptops, televisions, electric fans, or some power bricks that you use for your gadgets. Now, before we get to the project, here's a quick demo on how an inverter works. You just simply connect it to a fully charged 12 volt battery. For this demo, I'm using some alligator clips to connect the battery to the inverter. And finally, plug your appliance to the output of the inverter. Now you've just learned a simple life hack that could save you during calamities. Now these things come in different sizes, catering different wattage outputs. Now larger ones, well they can power almost your entire house of lights, electric fans, or smaller appliances. Meanwhile this thing, the smaller ones that are more common, is around 150 watts, can power an LCD TV, just one, or some lamps, quite a number of them, depending if they're LED or not. A laptop, well it can power one gaming laptop because most gaming laptops are around 130 watts. Here are the parts that you will need. First off, you'll need to find three USB power banks, preferably with 8000 mAh or higher. Now the higher the mAh, the higher the capacity. Now the higher the capacity, the longer that your generator project would run. Next, you'll need your 12 volt DC to AC converter. This would turn your batteries into a wall outlet. Now you can buy one in your local automotive store. You can easily find them in the accessory aisle. Now, if you want to save up some money, you can visit banggood.com and they sell really good quality China-made inverters. A tiny little switch. This would turn your project on and off whenever you need it. You'll also need three rectifier diodes. And finally, we have two little modules that are optional. This would add safety in charging and using your project. Now we're going to get the lithium batteries inside this power bank. Let's start by tearing down the power bank. Grab a screwdriver, then carefully open your power bank. We'll only be needing the lithium battery and we won't be needing the charging module. Using your wire cutter, snip off the wires from the circuit. Keep the circuit. You'll need it for your future projects. Now do the same thing for the other two power banks and now you have three lithium cells. One of the advantages of using lithium batteries is that they can store a lot more power compared to other batteries. Step 2. I actually forgot to film the scene with the DSLR so there might be some inconsistency with the video quality. Anyway, just set up my phone with a super wide angle lens attached to the front camera to save up some time. It's going to be a lot better than a GoPro so it would do. For the project enclosure, you have two choices. You could either make one or find one. Now I would have to give emphasis on this. I used a 3D modeling software and a 3D printer to make my enclosure. Now the thing is not everyone has a 3D printer. It's okay. If you don't have one, all you need is your creativity and finding enclosures that would suit your project. You could let's say find a food container, a toolbox, a lunch box, or anything that's made out of wood or plastic, then just drill some holes for the outlet, the switch, the LED, and the DC jack. Now the reason why I did use a 3D printer in making this project was because I wanted to make it as small as possible and at the same time give it a professional finish. Now let's talk about the 3D modeling software. I did use a software called SolidWorks. It's pretty identical to 1 2 3D and SketchUp. 
but I'm more familiar to this because it's what they teach us in college in my engineering degree. And it's pretty cool because you get to apply the boring things that you've learned from school and apply it in real life. In my case, I used it on this project. It took me around 30 minutes to finish my initial design. It's a very minimalist design. It's just a cube with a hollow build having four pillars on each side as mounts for the screw and some supports. That's basically it. And of course the bottom. If you do have a 3D printer, I did leave a downloadable link below to the STL files of this project enclosure so that you guys could print the exact same thing that I printed, like this one. Oh yeah, also gave the finished 3D printed enclosure a matte black finish paint job. In the third step, we will be rewiring the inverter. Using your screwdriver, start off by unscrewing the front and the rear panel of your inverter. Now, desolder the wires coming from the circuit board to the outlet. Then carefully slide off the circuit from the metal enclosure. Then, desolder the wires coming from the input and the output pins of the inverter. Afterwards, solder wires that are longer compared to the old ones that were originally connected. Now, this would make the wiring a lot easier in the next step in assembling the project. You can now slide the circuit back inside the metal enclosure. Finally, you can return the screws by screwing them back to where they belong. Oh yeah, and before we forget, as for the front and the rear panels, you can set aside the rear panel, but you might want to save the front panel because we're going to use it for the next step later on. Now in the fourth step, we'll be assembling the project. I chose contact cement as my adhesive to mount the inverter to the enclosure. The reason for this is because contact cement does not melt when it heats up. Carefully position the inverter, then route the output wires to the outlet hole. Now grab the outlet plug that you took from the inverter, then solder the wires of your inverter's output to the outlet plug. After doing so, snap the outlet to the enclosure, as well as the power switch. For the DC jack, you'll have to carefully position it to the hole, making sure that it fits and it's aligned. You won't be able to snap it to the enclosure, so spill a considerable amount of hot glue to hold it in place. I also added an optional LED indicator so that I would know that the project is in use. Then again, I used some hot glue to mount it in place. On top of the inverter, I applied a layer of contact cement, then cut a quarter inch thick of wood to act as an insulator between the battery and the inverter. The reason why I chose wood is because it's flat, it's rigid, and not to mention it acts as a good insulator for heat. I assembled the do-it-yourself battery pack by soldering them in series, then soldered wires on each end as well as the junctions on each cell. Now you don't want these wires to short, so grab some tape to make sure they don't come in contact with each other. Then again, I applied a layer of contact cement on top of the wood to hold my do-it-yourself lithium battery pack in place. Now to mount the tiny modular circuit, I applied another layer of contact cement on top of the battery, then added another sheet of wood to act as an insulator between the batteries and the circuit. On top of the wood, I applied a few drops of super glue to mount the modular circuits in place. It's a shame that the circuits did not come with screw holes, so the only way to keep them in place is to glue them. Now find the variable DC power supply because we're going to calibrate the adjustable step-down regulator for the project's internal charger. Set it at around 18 to 19 volts, then connect your power supply's output to the step-down regulator's input pins. On the output pins, connect some alligator clips to your voltage tester as you carefully adjust the output voltage by turning the knob as you approximately reach 12.6 volts. Here's a schematic diagram that I prepared for you. This is how the wiring of the components should look like. After you've wired them up together, you can now close the project's lid. It should snap snugly to the enclosure's body. To fasten the lid in place, you must find some screws that are fit for the holes. I recycled some screws that I had lying around, then I screwed them in place using my screwdriver. For you to be able to charge your project, Find a power brick with a voltage of at least 14 to 24 volts, then plug it into your project's charging port. You can also charge it directly to a solar panel with the same output voltage. And now you have your own portable AC output power bank. And that's how you make a portable wall outlet power bank. 
If you did like this video, feel free to press the thumbs up button. If you want to see more of these videos, feel free to press the subscribe button. I also have to mention our sponsors. Special thanks to Lenovo, Banggood.com, and Gearbest.com for making this project possible. Anyway, I've been gone for quite some time. And to make up for that, I did make a lot of unposted um project tutorials so if you want to see more of these videos don't forget to press the subscribe button anyway bye guys thank you for watching this week's weekend project is kind of special and i dedicate this to the people who were recently affected by the series of calamities that struck their country for the past year I also dedicate this to those who don't have access to electricity in the less developed areas of the world.